Hey everybody, how's it going? I find it a lot easier to learn something new and a lot easier to motivate myself to learn something new when I realize that the people who have learned it or who are where I want to be at some point in their lives were ignorant or idiots just like me. And one of the things I talk about on this channel is I don't really want people ever to look up to me. If anything, I think it's actually better if you look down at people. I'm not saying that you should look down on people as if I'm better than you, ha ha, and that you should express yourself in that way. That's very negative and that's very bad. But rather, when you're seeking to learn something, I find that looking up to people as if they're geniuses and you're not is a, a very cancerous thing and it's going to hurt you when it comes to you trying to learn something new or you being motivated to learn something new. Because if, if they're so smart and you're not, you, you now have an excuse as to why it is you can't learn something or why you can't figure something out. So now you can give yourself a pass and not figure it out. Very often on this channel, I'll get asked, what are some of the stupidest things you've done with repairs? And I want to share one of them today. The reason I'm sharing it is because I'm hoping that it will inspire other people to try and learn something that they thought they couldn't learn by realizing that with one of the largest channels on YouTube, if not the largest channel on YouTube, to this component level logic board repair, I too am a complete and utter idiot. So let's go over the stupidest thing. I don't know if I've ever even gone over this in this channel before. I'm honestly really embarrassed that I was ever this ignorant, but I thought I would go over it. So when I do these board repair videos, I usually have a schematic on my left and a board view on my right. The schematic goes over how the circuit is put together. So for instance, to, to power the screen over here, you have this chip over here that's going to take your five volts of power, PP5 ESO, and when it's told to turn on, when it gets you know panel P5VEN on pin two, it is going to allow power to go to the screen on pin five. So this is a little circuit that shows you, you know, how the screen is powered. Now, if you want to go and figure out, let's say where this chip is on the board, the schematic works in tandem with something called the board view, which is on the right. So if I right click on U8500, it will show me where that chip is on the physical board. So here is the, here's the motherboard. Here's its, you know, it, it, what it looks like. And then I could zoom in on this board view and it tells me that this chip, which is usually unmarked on the board, these chips have no markings on them whatsoever. That is U8500. So the schematic over here says C8515, C stands for capacitor, R8515, R stands for resistor, U8500, U stands for chip. Yeah, so I guess that stands for chip or something. But U is, U is for an integrated circuit. And the thing that got me in the beginning and the reason for several years that I couldn't crack board repair is because I didn't, know, I didn't have access to a board view and I didn't know that they, that they existed. So when I would find the board number for a board, I would just search for, you know, schematic or diagram. When I would search diagram or schematic or anything like that, I would find some semi-illegitimate looking website and I would give them five or 20 bucks and then I would get an email with a file. And the file only contained the schematic, not the board view. I didn't even know what a board view was. I didn't know what the, that the word board view was, you know, what it meant, that it existed, that this was a thing. So when I was buying these and only getting the schematic, I thought to myself, wow, I guess you need to be a college graduate in order to know where the chip is. So let's say that I thought U8500 was bad, right? I would look through the schematic and think, I need to, my problems with U8500. It never is, but let's say it is. I would not know how to find that on the motherboard because the motherboard is unmarked and all the chips in the motherboard are unmarked. So I would think to myself, well, hmm, there are people out there that fix this. How do they do it? And back in the day, you know, in 2008, 9, 10, nobody was sharing any of this type of information. There weren't really message boards about it. So there was no information sharing. So I figured, my brain, I guess the people that do this are so smart that they're able to figure out based on the schematic, where the chip is on the board. Maybe they're given a secret decoder ring or something. Maybe uh, some of these numbers or dots that I don't understand that are on the schematic. So let's say if you take a look on the schematic and you zoom in a lot, you'll see that like right over here, it says 110. Maybe this tells them that 110 millimeters into the board, that's where the chip is or something. And I gave up. Because I would see on rare occasion, people would post the schematic and they would say, you know, this may be it. And someone would say, thank you. And it would be a closed thread that you couldn't reply to. I actually thought that 
I needed to be an electronics engineer, a master's or PhD, in order to be able to decode the schematic to be able to tell where the component from the schematic is on the motherboard. And because I wasn't smart enough to be able to tell psychically where the component is on the board, I guess I can't do this. And I gave up. And then a few years later, I was like, no, I'm going to figure this out. And I buy from another site. I get a schematic. I rack my head against a wall for three or five days. I post online. I remember posting on, I think, some Stack Overflow uh, site for that was more, you know, focused on schematics and diagrams and saying, yeah, I, I don't know how they do it. I guess you, you give up. And I finally gave up after days of banging my head against the wall and thinking, I think it's this chip. I'm going to guess it's this chip. I'm going to follow the traces back to the chip. But, oh, wait, this thing's... Uh, this one, this thing's not near it, so I guess I can't find it. Or this is going to a via, and I don't know where that via is going to, so I guess I give up. And I gave up. And then one day, in two th- a few years later, I went to a different site, and they had the schematic listed with the board view. And it was this epiphany. It was like, wait a second. This entire time, there was a file, and it was hidden, that tells me where all this stuff was, and I felt like such a moron. Because for years, I had been telling myself that the people who were actually doing this work must have just been 10 times smarter than me. So that's why they were able to do this. And then it clicked. And then from there on in, I went on to start doing board repair at the store. And that's where you get this playlist where I have over 600 videos of me doing component level board repair. I'm going over almost every single different type of issue that you could have when a MacBook motherboard dies. They're all categorized here. I've got tons of them. And now my channel channel on YouTube has more subscribers than any other channel on YouTube that does component level board repair of consumer electronics and Apple laptops. And I started with probably a dumber assumption than anybody else has ever had in this entire industry. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, even though it's kind of embarrassing that I was that stupid while running a business doing this, is that I find that people often look up to those who know how to do something they can't. Or if you know, there's someone who knows how to do something you can't or has accomplished something that you can't, it's very common to look up to them and say, man, I, you know, I wish I was as smart as that person. I wish I was as lucky as that person. And I think it's bad to look up to other people that you want to learn something from or that you aspire to be like. If anything, I think it's actually best to look down. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that you go around uh, with this holier-than-thou attitude thinking, I'm better than you. I'm better than this person. I'm, you know, uh, you know, and, and projecting that in your speech when you're dealing with them because nobody wants to deal with a dick. Just keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. But the way I, I prefer to realize that the people, I, I try to look for these little things that show me that the people that are, that, uh, are, are where I want to be are human just like me. They make mistakes just like me. They have, you know, th- they screw up just like me. They get greedy or angry or jealous or stressed out or depressed or aggravated the same way I do and that they overlook things the same way I do. The reason that I think it's important to do that is that if you don't do that, if you assume that these people are just, uh, you know, so much smarter and better than you, then you're going to give yourself an out. You'll be able to say, well, I'd love to do what they did, but I'm not that lucky. I'd love to do what they did, but yeah, that's person has like an IQ of 180. I'm just a normal guy. You'll give yourself an out. You'll be able to rationalize why it is you don't have what they have or you haven't done what they've done. For me, when I realize that someone who has accomplished something that I'd like to accomplish in some small way is an idiot, it's actually this great epiphany for me. I like figuring out that the people that I want to be like or the people that have done things that I aspire to do are idiots in some or ignorant or um, or careless in some way, shape, or form. I like that. because Not because I want to see other people fail. Don't get it twisted. I don't want to see other people fail. But rather, it gives me hope for myself because I am an idiot. I have been careless. I've done stupid things before, and I don't most certainly am not a lucky person. So when I see someone else that has some of these same traits, and one of the things I've done with my my videos over the years is I've tried to play up the self-deprecating nature of it. I don't hide things that are imperfect. You know, I, I, don't, I didn't set up a perfect little desk area and have the camera just focused on it and edit everything out so that it looked like you needed an ingenious lab to do this. In my old videos, you could see, you know, a pile of Mr. Clinton's cat food that came in from Amazon that I couldn't fit anywhere else but my office at the time. Or, you know, the weeds that are tumbling into the window from my dis- the disgusting backyard of my old store. Uh, if 
I screwed something up, I would leave it in the video and then I would fix what I screwed up and then post it. If something was aggravating or hard, I wouldn't just edit out the first three or four tries. I would leave in me cursing as I try to do it and then I would leave in me being successful at the end of it. I remember uploading this video, how to not re how to not uh, reball an SMC or something like that. It was an, over an hour long. And I wound up reballing the SMC well. That was my first attempt at actually doing it. And rather than hide it because I was ignorant, I decided, screw it, let me upload it for everybody to see. And the reason I, I do that, the reason I play up the self-deprecatingness in some of these videos, the reason I don't always edit out the really embarrassing parts, the reason that I, I don't speak in the most, quote, professional manner is because I don't want people to look up to what I'm doing because it gives you an out mentally to be able to say, well... I'm not as professional as him, so I guess I can't do it. I'd like to, but I'm not as professional. Or I'd like to do what he does, but damn, I'm not as smart as him, so I guess I can't do it. You know, I'm just a normal person. He's smart, so I guess I have an excuse for when I give up at why I can just stop trying. I don't want to do that. I want to give people that out. I want people to see... Uh, just how dumb and stupid I am in all these videos, which is why I have hour-long videos on my business failures, of which there are many, and still continuing. Like, I don't know, let's say me deciding to move to a space that's three times as much money, and uh, right as the New York City economy goes to complete shit. Uh, there are many business mistakes I've made, and I've shared them on this channel in hour-long videos, and there are many more that I'll make. And there are mistakes I make while fixing boards, there are mistakes I make in everything I do. And I leave all of it in, and I, I don't try to play up this fake sense of professionalism that I used to see in videos 10 years ago when I started, where they will have just one section of the desk and it'll be some sort of sexy photo booth thing. They'll have, you know, they'll only film things from the perfect angle. If there's a part that's hard to do that takes three times of trying to do properly, they'll edit it so that you only see the last try and they'll have some, some, stock techno music in the background that sounds really high tech and they'll have a sexy logo at the end of it and it'll make it seem like well I guess I have to be really professional and good to be able to do this I want to include all the mess ups in all these the videos that I've done here because I don't want someone to give themselves an out whether for starting a business or for doing the board repairs and sharing all the stupid stuff I hope encourages other people I want them to think damn this guy's a dumbass if he can start a business then so can I. And, you know, when they're done with their minimum wage Walmart shift, start working on their idea that they have late at night for an hour every single day, even just an hour every single day, just to slowly get the ball moving. Whereas if they think, wow, this guy's really lucky or damn, this guy's a really smart businessman. I guess, you know, I'm not a really smart business person. I'm just a Walmart clerk. I guess I can't do that. I want them to think that. I want them, I want them to realize the whole story. I want them to see the whole thing. I want them to think, damn, this guy is an effing dumbass. If he can do it, then surely I can do better. I, I, and I make sure to include everything in, include every piece in the story there so that people can have that, that click. I remember in the early days, there were people that were saying that it was stupid to share these videos because A, I'm showing other people how to do my job, but B, that they're, quote, unprofessional. And because they're unprofessional, they're bad videos. And the things that make them unprofessional, those little, you know, injections of humanity from time to time, are the very things that I hope encourage the next generation to actually try to do this stuff. Because they see that, you know, I'm, I'm a normal dude just like them. There's this is one video I did a few years ago, humanize your mentors and realize the rest of the world is just like you. It didn't get a lot of views because when I did this video, I only had a few hundred subscribers. But stuff like this, I, I believe in that. And I believed in that when I was doing all of this stuff initially. So if you're an expert in your field or you've seen a lot of success in your field, please be open in sharing your failures and try to present yourself in a manner where the next generation of people who are at the bottom or who are beginners or ignorant can identify with you a little bit because they're going to feel, they're not going to feel the most confidence in the world when they're starting out and they're failing and they're screwing up. And if they get to hear about your screw ups at the stupid things you did and may just encourage them and think, make them think, damn, you know what? The professor... He can do all the stuff I can't, but man, he was really stupid. I'm really stupid right now. Maybe I can get to where he is. If they can identify with you, it keeps them from giving themselves this mental out where they're allowed to say, I guess I can't do that because I'm not as smart or as lucky or as whatever as, as this person. And it's something that I, I try to get across in all of these, uh, all these old board repair videos I do. You'll see me including all sorts of whoops, screwed this up or screwed that up or, oh, I don't know. I don't know why this is doing this. This is a guess. Let's see if it works. And here's why I made my guess. Oh, look, it worked. Rather than just, 
I'm a genius, and because I am a genius, I will place- Oh, my genius is correct again! And I, and, you know, this is the prop. The, the, I want to include everything. And it, it makes it more personable in a way that I think people are really looking for in 2021. People are sick and tired of the both marketing and education that's done in that old school way where you, you just assume that this that this person is a genius and they just got everything right from the beginning. That's not the way it is. And I think that including a little bit of humanity while you're teaching is a good thing. So that was the stupidest thing that I have done when it comes to board repair was I made the assumption that the people who could did board repair back then, because I didn't know what a board view was, I thought that they had some super secret magic way of figuring out where this chip is on the board when they looked at the schematic. I really thought there was some sort of secretly decoded way, maybe based on the numbers that are hiding in certain places. I remember, you know, sitting here trying to figure out, maybe this 110 over here means something. Maybe it's a code. Maybe that's the 110th trace on the board or the 110th millimeter. Way. Like, I really thought that that had to do something with it. And I racked my head against the wall and I finally just said, I give up, I give up. And then one day I found a board view and that was that. And I remember I spent years to figure out this one piece of information that 99.9% .9 of the people that enter this bu this business know off the top of their head. That's how stupid I am. That's how dumb I am. And I'm still able to do this. So hopefully that encourages you to get into it. If you want to get into this, but you think you can't, I, I you can't possibly be dumber than me. You may think you're dumber than me, but you're not. It's really hard to be stupider than Lewis Rossman. Whenever I manage to be successful at something, I try to be the type of person that you can look down upon, not the type of person that you could look up to. And I mean that in the absolute best way possible. And I hope that I have gotten that message across singly with this video. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.